built a little smelting machine right here because, uh, yeah, because I need to be able to smelt mass things. And now let's pick up more of the saplings and then get ready to plant. But first, we're going to take out all this, all this lovely puzzle. And pick up all the lovely puzzle. And in its place, put down a bunch of lovely moss. And a bone meal. Woohoo! Look at all that moss got converted into pot salt. The moss farm is actually kind of a bone farm. Okay, moss blocks out of it. Lots of moss blocks. Uh, azalea trees and flowering azalea trees. Oh, I should do something about these, but I think my azalea storage here. Yeah, it's kind of full. That's okay. Um, the dripstone thing farm is doing nicely. And... Chugging away. And when it grows in like this, it looks like monster teeth, which is kind of cool. Come on. You can... And the, the pointed dripstone is useful for some of the other farms. And the dripstone block is useful for some of the other farms. It's, uh, it's, it's an okay looking block. I'm sorry. So yeah. And with this much of it, it turns out... Hey, back in there, buddy. Back in there. Uh, it turns out it's pretty... Uh, it's pretty... Pretty fruitful. I built a lava farm. I didn't show this. Lots of lava. Lots of lava. I think I can fill up... A little over three full double chests of lava buckets in one go if I need. I left little things here so I can go and pick it up. So I don't have to walk on top of the lava buckets with the cauldrons and accidentally risk falling in. I don't know why I need this much lava, but I have it. And here's why I need the dirt. I'm converting pods all to dirt. Because I can take the pods all here. And lay it down and convert it into path blocks. And dig it up and convert the path blocks into dirt. Pretty straightforward. Um, and honestly, I probably should just convert them into path blocks over at the tree farm. Rather than laying them down and using my shovel on them twice. Um... But it works. I have a bunch more dirt. A stack of dirt. This, <laughs> this is a little proof of concept I did. Decided to do it in the survival world instead of, um, you know, doing it in a, in a uh, creative world. Stack up correctly, please. I'll convert these later. Um, but if I take 
dirt. Climb up here. Do that this clay. Um, and then I just place down dirt. This part gets a little tedious, but I can then take water bottles. Put my dirt away. Uh, I can take water bottles. I probably do more than five at a time. I have a convenient water source I place down here. And I can make mud. And this is the tedious part. It would be nice if you could stack the water bottles um, and, um, and then just apply them one after another without having to swap out inventory space. But that's the way it goes. And eventually, because I have dripstone underneath here, this mud turns into clay. And clay is useful for a couple things. You can turn it in, you dig it up without a silk touch tool and you get clay balls and you can craft the clay balls into clay pots, into flower pots. Um, and you can uh, also create terracotta, regular terracotta and colored ter terracotta. So I've got a bunch of clay here Got more that I just harvested. And I wanted, I brought up, I wanted to make more charcoal so I could fuel these furnaces and I could take some of this clay. Like say that. And put half of it in here. And put half of it in here. And I'm gonna build another one of those smelting machines up here. And look at this, clay. More clay. Very nice. So this will then produce terracotta. And the regular uncolored terracotta is this lovely orange color. Reddish orange. Co oh. Uh, I guess it would help if I put some charcoal in that furnace. There we go. Um, oh, clay. And it's, it takes a little while. And it, the, the wiki says it eventually turns into clay, but it, it goes fairly quickly. And I'm thinking, like the lava, I mean, those the lava, some of the cauldrons take a long time to fill because it's just a pure random tick thing. But, um, oh, I, I dropped some clay. Um, but when you have that many of them, 168, uh, it just, you know, the chance of... of it takes a long time for them to all fill up. But if you start with 168 empty cauldrons, um, it's not going to take you very long for the random tick to fill up one of them. So you have lava pretty much on demand. Oops. Ooh, careful. That could have been really bad. Um, so what I'm thinking, uh, I'm going to skip building a water... A uh, water generator, because you can do that with the dripstone. I might do one up above, because I still have space in this uh, chunk. Um, I still have plenty of space here. But what I'm thinking, whoops, hey, it would help if I hit the right keys on the keyboard. So, but I'm, what I'm thinking is. I need this. I want a the whole bunch of blocks up here somewhere um, that I need to be able to put a uh, dripstone underneath. That is the need here. What I'm thinking is thinking is that I don't need really any space. I don't know. I, I might be able to build this another block lower, and I could just use scaffolding get up to the top of it if i were looking to be super efficient with the space i could do that i'm not sure it's necessary so what i might do is i might block off this chunk or just leave it kind of open or leave it to be like dirt conversion space and then put the dripstone and blocks here and use this layer as a 
uh, as the, the the place to place all of the mud. And if I go and do what I'm used to doing here, which is placing... I mean, right below here is lava, so I have to be a little careful. But, if I grab some of these deep slate tiles and some of this polished deep slate... Right, so if I place a tile on top of that and then I use this... Yeah, see, so I could place the deep slate, this polished deep slate at this level, and put the dripstone underneath that. I think that's what we'll do. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. Boom! There we go. Now we have a little tray to put down a bunch of dirt. Um, which again, well, you know what? I could just put down the pods all. Yeah, so I could use the layer below as sort of pods all um, processing. And then I want to get more light up here just so that it looks okay. I'll probably get some shroom lights and just place them up around uh, in the sky. But let's see what we got here. So I need tear all this down. How much pointy dripstone do I have? Do I have enough to cover all of that? 36 here. Um, let's go find out. It's down below. Oh, we got plenty. Okay, so. Plenty of pointy dripstone. I don't need all this. I could probably put one back. Uh, you know what? Take it just to be safe. Let's go back up. Pardon me, Mr. Turtle. Okay, so come up here and we go back to the shovel and let's take all this stuff out. And I guess tear down my little um, proof of concept. Gonna drop all the dripstone underneath it, and I need to install dripstone on the ceiling above me. Up here. So. And it's easier to do from the scaffolding for sure, so I will probably put up more scaffolding to do the rest of the roof. Okay, so I've got the dripstone installed. Why are they dripping? There's no water above them and they're not on dripstone blocks. So they shouldn't, there shouldn't be any source of water above them. They shouldn't grow either, which is important. Oops. Let's see what we got up here. No, it's no water. That's weird. So do dripstone just naturally have the drip particles? Regardless of where they are? Huh. That's a little weird. Okay, so now I need some infrastructure up here. But let me go get a bunch of dirt and put some, um, get a water source block. Okay, infinite source of water right there. I'll probably install one of those down below. Um, I, need, I need some storage. So let me get some chests. And I want to put down some dirt. We can start already.
Oh. Huh. I think the only shovel I have is Silk Touch. I think that's a problem. I think this gets a lot easier if I don't use Silk Touch Shovel. So let's go make ourselves a non-Silk Touch Shovel. Okay, so I need a few books. I need some emeralds. I need exactly three emeralds. Oh no, I need more than that. So let's let's do that. And then I need yeah. Oh, happy toolsmiths, where are you? You're over here. The farmers, my toolsmiths are over here. Um yeah, look at this. Uh, yeah, efficiency to shovel, that works, that's fine. And now I need to find my guys I want. Unbreaking? Breaking? Oh, thank you. I should be repairing stuff. Uh, I want mending and efficiency five. Mending? Mending. I get that experience, yeah. And efficiency five. What I should do is I should rearrange these guys so the um, the really useful guys are all together. Efficiency five. Thank you. Okay. Now I do not have a grindstone right here. Why not? That's dumb. Put the leftover emerald away. So I've got these guys. Let's go back. It's going to use a lot of my levels to do, but that's okay. It's important. Okay, I have 45 levels. Let's see what this takes. The mending and, and unbreaking should take two levels or three levels, unless I put it the other way around. Two levels. And then efficiency. Whoops. Efficiency goes on that for another six. Either way, it doesn't matter. And then the shovel itself takes 13. And we're going to name them Gold Digger, so it's 14. We still have 23 levels. Not bad. So, let's go do our test. Okay, so I have my efficiency un. Breaking, mending. Oh, you know what I did not put on here? But this proves the point. Without the silk touch, this just turns into dirt. So I don't even need to turn it into path blocks. So when I grow the, the spruce trees over there with the pods all, I should just dig it up with this shovel. And then no, uh, no extra conversion work needed. All right, now we have a field of dirt. And we got a bunch of bottles. I don't have 32 inventory slots. 16 might work. Or not. Okay, so. Um, so, 13 would work. And we go through this tedious process of swapping things around. I wonder if I could do something clever like, oh, look, I already got some clay. Um, 
do something clever like put a water bottle in a item frame on the wall and look at it and just use the pick command. I'll have to try that. Another thing I'd like to recommend or suggest as a game mechanic is that if I put dripstone with water above it, above the, this, the water dripping down onto the dirt should eventually turn it into mud. I think that would be a very neat mechanic. But yeah, if we could put dripstone with water dripping underneath it above this and have it turn to mud that way, that would be really cool. I think that would be, it'd be a neat mechanic and it would make sense. Uh, it could be slow. I wouldn't need this to all be converted all at once because the the drying out through the, the dripstone to make the clay is not a fast process either. But it would be a completely automated way of just turning dirt into clay. And I honestly probably will never get all this converted to mud all at once because it doesn't make any sense. I mean, it, by the time I get it all done, it'll be... Half of it will be turned into clay already. And I should probably free up more space in my inventory before filling up the bottle, or before grabbing the bottle, so I could hold more bottles because I don't need all this sort of stuff in my inventory while I'm doing this. I place one of these inside the item frame. Can I then pick it? No! Oh, well, that's too bad. Oh well, that's okay. That would be a nice mechanic as well. Because then I could just go bloop and have more, more uh, full water in my hand. Must be nice if they had something like a watering can. So you could get multiple doses of water out of a single thing. And maybe that could be crafted with a water bucket and some additional iron to give it a handle. And you could get more uses out of that bucket. Because the thing is, I can place a, a thing of water into a source block like that and fill it up infinitely with these water bottles. I fill up as many of these water bottles as I want. So. And. and I can, of course, build a little machine to do this as well. where you can, I believe, place empty water balls inside of a dispenser and point it at a water source block and the dispenser and the, the you trigger the dispenser and the water bottles will fill. Um, and then you can or out of a cauldron, I'm not sure, I don't remember which. But then you could end up with a whole chest full of just water bottles that I could just load up my inventory from. But again, having to switch, having to go into the inventory to switch every single time is a pain in the butt. But, see, I'm making progress. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna let all these dry out just to make sure that I got dripstone on all the blocks below. That'll prove that I, that I did that step correctly. It's looking good so far. And then I can dig up all these, throw them in the smelter. I can build a bigger smelter, maybe right behind me over there. And then, or I can bring them downstairs and do it down there. And then, uh, yeah, and it's useful, the mud itself is a useful block, not only 
by itself because you can plant a lot of things in it and it's less than a full block so a hopper will pick up things through it no hopper minecart needed so i might build a little automated sugarcane farm using the mud blocks um, and then you can also combine it with straw or hay in or wheat i guess in order to make the that sort of adobe type block and uh mangrove roots mangrove tree roots in order to make that sort of muddy mangrove block so just kind of a cool block so lots of possibilities and i think i will use the space below to uh just make mud because if i do it up here it will it will as you can see half of it dries out by the time i get to the point where i can harvest and I have that whole space down below, which isn't being used for anything other than a space for the dripstone. So, so there we go. Um, anyway, that's it for now. Thank you for watching. This is Theron. It's been Minecraft Lime Party. And I will see you next time. Bye.